You've seen him on this era's 22 minutes. Destroy 187. Put your hands together. Sean Majumder, everybody. Yes, go! Narnia. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Good thing I ate mushrooms before I came out here tonight. This is going to be a wicked trip, man. It's wicked. How are we, guys? You feeling good? Thank you so much for coming out. You are here and you're Canadian. We are Canadian. The greatest country in the world. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Canada. Look at me, I'm going down on Canada. That's hilarious. This is fantastic. I'm so proud to be here in my home country, one of the greatest cities on the planet. Toronto, the greatest, most multicultural city in the world. I mean, where else can you go into an Irish pub and have a Sri Lankan guy make you the best fucking sushi pizza you ever had? Right here in Toronto, goddammit. Sorry, I'm getting worked up. I mean, look at all the colors. It's so, you've got a beautiful Indian lady all the way from Brampton. And, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Right? We have a Greek guy all the way from the dam. Am I right? Am I close? Fuck you, you're, okay, you're definitely, is, you've got Israeli mixed with Scottish. You're a nice, you're a Scottish Icelandic you're, uh, mm. you're an albino Jamaican. <laughs> yeah, man, me know that. You're black for sure, me know that. I can tell just by looking at you. Which part of the world are you from? Me, I'm, me, I'm making the, up, making the assumption that you are from Jamaica because you're here in Toronto. <laughs> me, I'm right? No, not the white girl. Look behind you. Which part of the world are you from? Toronto. <laughs> Too sheer. I mean, geez, I feel like I'm standing at the Intergalactic Council on Star Trek, for fuck's sakes. Look at all the goddamn aliens we got here today. I mean, really, if you think about it, right? If you're a racist, a pure racist, and you immigrate to this country, it truly is a land of opportunity. <laughs> Here in Canada, you can be any kind of racist you want to be. <laughs> I love racism. It's fantastic. It's been getting a lot of, you know, bad press over the last two, three hundred years, but... I love racism because I'm beige, really. I mean, that's it. I'm just a beigey beige, a mixy mix, right? Beige, because who hates beige people, really? I mean, you know what they say, ladies. Once you go beige, <laughs> you're never gonna forget about it because <laughs> beige people are really good at things, right? And then you'll have such a great, really fantastic time with a beige person in general that the next opportunity you have, like if you have to pick, right? Between a beige, like any colors, if there's a whole myriad of like colors in front of you, like of people, like if you're in Mississauga somewhere, you're a Karasaga. <laughs> <laughs> Local reference. <laughs> and you want to pick and you're not sure, then it's like a really high percentage chance that you'll go beige. I'm paraphrasing the kid's saying, but you know it. Now, what does it mean that I'm beige, right? See, my dad comes from India and my mom comes from Newfoundland, right? She's white. Yeah, yeah. White. White. I mean, white. Like turbo white, like disgusting white, man. Are you from Newfoundland, sir? Are you got new yes, you are, yes, you are. I can tell by how friggin' white you are. 
It's amazing because in Newfoundland, like when guys take off their shirt, you can see their hearts beating. Like that's how white. It's gross, man. It's disgusting. It's like if E.T. had sex with one of those cold tie spring rolls, you know the ones? You get at the green mango. Local reference. Yeah, I said it. Women in Newfoundland, when they're pregnant, they didn't even go get ultrasounds. They just go to the doctor, right? And, and you know where I'm going with this. The doctor just says, hey, go stand in front of that lamp. Pull up your shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, your baby's fine. Go on. <laughs> right? And that's Newfoundland. That's mom's side. She's white, right? And then my dad's side, he was from India. Finally, we can talk. Took a while, lots of colorful images. Now we're back to truth. <laughs> That's the thing. My dad was brown. He's like a dark brown, you know, like your kind of brown. Very good brown. <laughs> I love the brown. It's very good brown. <laughs> the Indian accent is the greatest, right? It's so awesome and soft and sweet. Even when Indian people get really, really mad and they're inside, they're raging. <laughs> they tail talk like this, very soft. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's true. <laughs> They're like, what did you just say? <laughs> oh, no, you did not. <laughs> did you? Okay, now I'm going to have to fuck you up really good then. <laughs> okay, thank you, and don't come again, bitch. You have no idea how many times I was stuck in front of someone in India trying to figure out what the fuck this meant. <laughs> trying to, is that a yes? Is that a no? What is it? What do you, what is it yes? <laughs> so can we get on the train? <laughs> Turns out he was having a seizure. I felt so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> And congratulations to the Indian community for just securing this big race that they've got next year, the, the Brampton Molson Hindi. Are you excited about it? <laughs> Hindi car racing? It's going to be awesome. <laughs> race goes from Shopper's World to the airport and back again. <laughs> Local reference. Nobody can be racist to me. Everybody can try, but when you're beige, like, you kind of get away with a lot of shit. Like, I like having fun with it, right? I'll go to a real racist area in the United States, I'll walk right into a place, a guy's like, excuse me, hold on there, little fella. <laughs> we don't serve your kind in here. See that sign right there? Clear as day. We don't serve your kind. You're one of them there, you're a... You're one of them, we don't serve no nay, you're a nay, you're a, you're a wop, a wasp, you're a spig wop ching, ching, nix spig. You're a nix spig wop ching, nay, wop nix, spig wop, die, fag, fag, ching, nay. What the hell are you now? I know you're not welcome just by looking at you. Now give me a second. Okay, now let me ask you a couple questions. Okay, now let me see. You're good at basketball, right? You're really good? No, you're not very good at basketball. Okay, all right. You're probably a really, really horrible driver, ain't you? If you're a horrible, no, you're pretty good. You're moderate to good. Okay, okay, okay. Then on a scale of one to ten, how attracted are you to sheep? <laughs> and I, oh shit, I can't figure you out, you little Rubik's Cube. What the hell are you? All right, hurry up and order before my manager gets back because I'm going to get in trouble. What the hell do you want? And I just walk up and I'm like, I will take the tandoori chicken tits, please. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're Spanish. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> Idiot. Because my parents split when I was a baby, when I was just a little baby. So I was raised in, in, in Newfoundland in a town that was with my white mom my sister, and 347 white people. <laughs> so I had no idea I was anything but white. I thought I was like every other little white youngster running around the gravel roads of Burlington. Cut off jean shorts, you know. <laughs> ACDC tank top. <laughs> Big mustache. 
I guess that I should have known that I had Indian genetics right there. You know, I had big, I was the only kid in grade two with a friggin' porn star mustache. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Indian boys when we're born covered in pubes. I mean, it's disgusting. <laughs> like I was covered in pubes, head to toe. I had to shave around just to get a friggin' mustache. That's how it was for me. Put me up on the veterinarian stable. Come on, hold him down. Meow. Watch out for his wiener. Meow. <laughs> But I had no idea. I had no idea, right? And it, it, was, it was interesting because, you know, you're living in the town and you're just doing your thing and you're playing, you're going to school. And then one recess I heard it, eh? Packy! Get the little Packy! There goes the Packy! Hey, Packy! <laughs> Some of you are laughing a little too hard. Packy, Packy, get a little Packy, and I'd be so excited. Because I'd never seen a Packy before. I'd be like, come on, boys, let's go get him. Ah, right on, let's go. Come on. We all stand around staring at me, slippery fuckers, get away, come on. Oh, oh, turns out I was the Packy. <laughs> Fuck, beat the shit out of me, right? And down I go. And then I figured it out. Wait a minute. My dad's from India, not Pakistan. It's not my bully's fault. They just need to be educated. <laughs> right? I need to have compassion for these people. So, you know, no problem. Another recess, another beating. We got to get out, Packy. Punch, punch. I'm like, no, no, you're geographically incorrect. <laughs> Fuck out, Packy. Shut up. No, no, you don't understand. India seceded from Pakistan under the Indian Independence Act on August 15, 1947. Shut up, Packy. No, no, although the similarities are obvious, vis a vis certain spicy foods and other kinds of crazy songs like, hi, 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 that's more India than Pakistan. You can't just lump us all under the same racial stereotype or you lose all credibility as an ignorant racist fuckface. Shut up, Packy. Punch, punch. Right? I mean, sure, I had my nose bashed in, I pissed myself. But she was wrong, okay? <laughs> but for me, it was interesting, because, you know, like being beige, everywhere I go, people think I'm one of them. Like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, every race I go to, if I go to, like, Dominican Republic, they're talking Spanish to me every time. And if I go to friggin', I was in Afghanistan. We were doing a show over there. You probably get this, too, don't you, sir? Right? Everywhere you go, always. So, so I was in Afghanistan, and I wanted to learn a little bit of the language. I wanted to say hi, because we were there doing a special for the troops. And we, you know, basically what would happen on the base, they'd have a little market on Saturday afternoons. And we were doing a show Saturday night. So the Afghani people would come, you know, local people, and they'd have a little market. You know, they'd sell things like, you know, copper wire and batteries and <laughs> caps and things. You know, just fun stuff you can improvise, you know make stuff with, you know, fun crafts, arts and crafts, <laughs> right? And uh, so I wanted to learn a bit of language, so I was like, salam alaikum, you know, right? Guy looks at me, he's like, walaikum salam, salam akhali, hatse makhali, makhali sa'ad, akhmali tse, hamad salam akhali sa'ad, it's my little book, and it's salam, huh? Wait, uh, are you Afghani? I was like, no. I go, are you from Newfoundland? Because I couldn't understand a fucking word you just said. <laughs> Newfoundland reference. <laughs> a mistake. Different races for different things, right? Like, I remember we did a show up in Guelph, right? And after the show, it was me and two white guys doing the show. And uh, these two big white guys, and I was just starting out, and I was so excited. And after the show, this guy comes up. You probably met this guy before. No <laughs> way, man. Read on, man. Holy fuck, man. Read on, man. <laughs> you know that guy? Oh, man, right on, bro. Listen, man. And he talks to the two white guys. He's like, man, that thing you did about the friggin' your dad, man, top shelf, man, fucking right on. 
And then he goes to the other guy. He's like, no way, dude. That thing about your dog's totally relatable, man. It's fucking read on. <laughs> and then without even looking at me, without looking back, it just says to the two white guys, yeah, man. And the nigger was funny, too. <laughs> I swear to God. Now, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Did that just happen, right? Because people, if you're going to be racist, you can't be ignorant. <laughs> right? You have to be educated. You have to be well-read. You have to know the group that you hate. You have to know what color they are, what are the reasons why you hate them, what are the criteria for that hate. Right? That's just lazy racism. Okay? Because any well-read, civilized, upstanding racist would know that I'm a dirty packy. <laughs> this is just lazy racism. You can't do that. In the United States, they don't even have a word for packy. Did you know that? In the United States, this is what they do. This is how lazy those racists are. Okay? Very, very not cool. They take the N-word, the worst word on the planet. I hate the word, right? They take nigger, and they just go, okay, now, where's he from? Which part of the world? He's over there? Somewhere with lots of desert? Yeah, sand nigger. That's what we call him, sand nigger. What? You can't fucking do that. You can't just take the N-word and tack on an earthly element, and there's your friggin' racist slang. It's bullshit. It's lazy racism. You don't see ice nigger, water nigger, fire nigger, earth nigger. You don't see that. It's fucking horrible. Make an awesome curling team, though. But I'm just saying, it's not fucking cool. It just comes from the weirdest places, racism, right? I was driving in a cab. I was on my way to Johnny B's house, my buddy Johnny B. And I get in the cab, and this Indian guy, he's like, okay, hey, how you doing, man? Where do you like to go today? <laughs> One of those cool Indian dudes. Hey, man, what's up, man? Buddy, at least are doing okay, hey, motherfucker. Like swearing like in a weird, it doesn't work because he's like got that accent. <laughs> nah, fuck that, man, fuck that. <laughs> and as we're driving, this Mercedes pulls out and cuts, cuts him off. And he's like, hey, what the hell are you doing, you stupid bitch? <laughs> fuck, man, these chinks, they don't know how to drive. And he's like saying it to me, like, you know, like, man, these chinks, man. You know what I'm saying, buddy. You know what I'm saying. I'm like, fuck, you no, know, I don't, you fucking packy. You're not allowed to say that. No, by the fact that you're a packy, you can't say chink. You're just not allowed. It's horrible. And he goes, no, no, I'm not racist. I go, yes, you fucking are. You just said chink. All chinks can't drive. That is not racist. Okay, well, if me thinking that the majority of Asian people in Toronto are not very good drivers makes me a racist, I will accept that. I think by nature, we all are racist, you know? We gotta, we're just, we, the way human beings think, it's very, very segmented, and things gotta be in your own tribe, and I mean, I'm guilty. I have trouble with racism sometimes. We're all human. Sometimes we have this thing, and it just gets in our mind. Like, for example, I think that some races are better at certain skills than other races. I mean, right? I mean, German people, what do they do? They, they build cars like nobody's business. Right? Mexicans. What do Mexicans do? They're amazing. What are they great at? Taco stands. Yes. <laughs> You're fucking right. Tacos. Mexican people are great at tacos. Italian people. What are they great at? Cotton hair. Amazing. <laughs> they're known for it. And they're so good at it. And here's the thing. Here's where I'm struggling, you guys. I'm struggling with this because there was a time when I lived in Toronto, I would go to this old Italian barber on, on, on Wellesley. I would go to this old Italian barber because he was old and he was Italian. That's how I first went in there because I knew this guy is going to be great. He's old, he's Italian, they do that really well. You go in, you sit down, and he sits you down and you go, Hello, Charlotte McGruber, what do you like today? You want a little over the tub, you want someone on the side, it's a Playboy magazine. Hey, it's fantastic. And he starts cutting your hair and fucking puts his hot oil on your face and it burns like hell. But it didn't matter because he was old and he was Italian and you trusted him. And he did a perfect haircut. And he's like, hey, okay, the Toronto Maple Leafs said they suck. And now you go at $2, please. 
And it was great. Well, a few years ago, I came back, and I was like, I'm going to go get an old Italian barber haircut. I'm so excited, right? And I walked into that place. It was, like, amazing. Gling, ding, ding, ding. That was the door bell on the thing. <laughs> Gling, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> One more time. Gling, ding, ding. And all the Italian people were gone. Yeah. And <laughs> they weren't freaking carted up and killed. <laughs> The way you went, oh, that was so sweet. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, they've, been, they've been killed by aliens. <laughs> that was so sweet. <laughs> so I walked into this old Italian barber. Bleakly, ding, ding, ding. And all the Italian barbers had been slaughtered. <laughs> okay, wait. Fuck, we're gonna get through this one, boys. <laughs> and all the Italians were gone. I know. And standing there were all Chinese people. Now, I stood there at the door. And I was like, oh, oh. And I had the thought for a second. I was like, holy shit. I don't want no Chinese guy cutting my hair. Why? I don't know. Why did I think that? Why was I a racist asshole in that moment? Like, I didn't know where it came from, but I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, hey, it's different now. Chinese people. Okay, go get my hair. I wasn't like that free. I had that moment where my racist brain just creeped up on me. And I just stood there, and I was like, holy fuck, no way. <laughs> Chinese people don't know how to cut hair. Where did it, I felt horrible. I didn't bring my computer there to get fixed, you know what I mean? I would have had a different <laughs> approach. And I, I told myself, I'm like, no, 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 no. Come on now, you're a Canadian, you're mixed race, you're an Aquarian, fuck. <laughs> just be open, man, just be open. Be a good person. You can do this, right? And I said, fuck it. I'm not going to be a racist. I'm going to go in. I'm going to let these Chinese people cut my hair. So I sat in the chair. And I was so I just said, fuck it. You know, it's going to be the same. He's going to tell me everything about what to do and what I would like and give me a Playboy magazine. Maybe it'll be an Asian Playboy magazine. It'd be great. <laughs> and then as soon as I sit down, it was like, Yum! I was like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 whoa. I, uh, <laughs> I need, you know, he's like, no, no, he's good. Yum! Holy fuck, he didn't even want, I was expecting Alberto to be like, how much do you want? You like it a little off of the top? You want to play Boy Magazine? All these memories were coming back. <laughs> and he just fucking butchered my hair. And with each little piece of hair that fell on the ground, the more racist I became. <laughs> I didn't want to feel that way. It just kept getting worse. Even the sound of the friggin' clippers started playing tricks on my mind. I pulled up the scissors. I was like, get those scissors away. There's bird flu all over those fucking scissors. I didn't want to think that way. There's a woman eating a hot dog in there. I was like, that's real dog for sure. I felt horrible. I didn't now we have a young fella in the crowd. How old are you? Let's just figure this out right away. You're 15. He just got his pubes. Give it up for pubes. Yes. Awesome. Isn't that great? You get your pubes and you're like, I am a man now. What is your name, pubes? Jordan, it's nice to meet you. Everybody say, hi, Jordan. Hi, Jordan. Buddy, you and me, tonight, all night long, we're going to be best buddies. <sighs> Chinese, like, it's such a deep, rich culture. They're super, super smart. They're super brilliant people. Their writing is so insane. Have you tried to read Chinese writing? The symbols and the... What was our big concern growing up? Cross our T, dot our I. That was it. <laughs> Those symbols, it's like, holy shit, man. You gotta be a genius. You know? That was it, just, you know, I can imagine being like a little third grader, right? In, in like China. Can you imagine, be like, teacher comes in. 
Wait, I forgot the fucking bit. <laughs> My buddy Pete. Again, this is an old bit. <laughs> Teacher Pete. Wait. <laughs> Wait, Chinese writing. And the teacher comes in, and he goes, it was so hard to learn. Peter, what is it? I fucking forget it. He wanted me to do it. Come out here. Come out here. You got to tell me what it is. Come here. You got, you want to see Peter come out, my best friend? <laughs> now, wait, wait, wait. Wait, come here. Wait, get a mic. I want you to do it. I want you to do it. Oh, you do, yes, you do. You put me up to this. Okay, so the teacher's like, Little so and so, mm and yeah. yeah. Show me your work. Show me your work. Oh yeah, this is horrible grammar. No. Wait, no. <laughs> she's just like, look at this grammar. Yeah, yeah. She's like, look at this grammar. This is horrible grammar. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Oh no, I gotta back it up because they gotta set it up. Okay, ready? Ding ding ding. Oh no, these old Italian people are slaughtered. Their heads are cut off. Oh. <laughs> and the Chinese writing, it's so intense. Have you seen the Chinese symbols? It's like, oh my God. What was our big concern, Pews? Cross our T, dot our I. Can you imagine being a little Chinese third grader, right? Finishes his report and he hands it in and the teacher's like, hey, Ming. Because <laughs> that's what he'd be called. Ming, look at this awful grammar. Look at this. You forgot to put the man in the dragon boat swimming down the river Yangtze, <laughs> eating Chinese pickles as the sun rises on the east and the samurai warrior cuts the butter. And <laughs> fuck! Now I know my man in the houseboat free with the dragon. Ha 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 <laughs> yeah. We got through it. We got through it. Oh, that was fun, though. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I just can't get that image out of my head of the slaughtered Italian people. <laughs> oh, Italians. You know there's a lot of Italians here, especially during the World Cup in Toronto. Holy shit, the football! Hey, Portugal! Hey, hey, Portugal! Hey, football! Hey, what about Italia? Italia! Hey! Argentina! Hey! One! <laughs> Yay! But you know what? In the United States, it's very different, right? Because everywhere around the world, it's called football. It's football, right? F U T B O L. Football. <laughs> Right? And here, say, you know, people down there, they call it soccer. I was in, uh, here in Toronto, two World Cups ago, going crazy up on Dundesh. Going crazy. Having a great time for the World Cup, right? And then I went back down to L.A. And I was like, come on, let's go watch some football. Football. Hey, oh, football. And the guy was like, excuse me, hold on there, fella. Remember this guy? Hey. <laughs> excuse me, what would you call it? I went, well, soccer, but everywhere else is called football. No, it ain't. It's, it's not called football, okay? I'm like, yes, it is. Everywhere around the world. No, it ain't, okay? So that's what I hate about you Europeans, you fruity little Europeans. <laughs> I'm Canadian. It's like the same diff, fruity, now. This is what I hate. You, Mary, you, you Europeans, you just come over there, and you try to take the name of our game. You put it on the name of your game, just try to make your, your game seem tougher. Bunch of fruity toots running around with their little stay-up stockings, little shorty shorts, their long curly hair. I've seen it. Bunch of fruity toots kicking the ball with their foot, blocking the ball with their foot, scoring goals with their foot, doing this with their foot. That ain't football, you idiot. Football is when a man takes a ball in his hands and he runs with a ball in his hands and he blocks people with his hands and he throws the ball with his hands and he scores a touchdown with his hands. Yeah, that's football, you idiot. <laughs> and I tell you what, I tell you what, you can screw the metric system too while you're at it. Don't think I don't know what that is. That's just terrorism wrapped up in zeros and ones. Tell you what. We got to go over there and get that Dewey Decimal fella before he comes over here and kills us. That's what we got to do. Ten to the power of one. Ten to the power of freedom, bitch. 
<laughs> oh, it's great. I'm so proud to be Canadian. I, well, see, my thing is, is I'm Canadian, and I live in the United States, but I look Mexican. <laughs> I am the North American Free Trade Agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can call me NAFTA. But it's great, though. I mean, you know, I was in the United States, and I was standing on stage, and I said, hey, everybody, I'm from Canada. And this woman yells out, she's like, boo. <laughs> boo, really? Boo for Canada? <laughs> but I wouldn't expect to hear boo from an American when you say you're Canadian, right? I expect to hear more like, aw. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Look at him. You're a little Canadian, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, you're a little Canadian. You're a little pretty good duty. Yes, it is. Look at him, George. He's a Canadian. Isn't it cute? They just got electricity up there, huh? Come on. Throw him a little biscuit in a blanket. Don't get too close. You might get the SARS cow disease. Ooh. <laughs> Fuck, I'm so sick and tired of Americans not understanding us as Canadians. We are, look, you know what? First of all, we've had electricity since the early 80s, number one. Okay, <laughs> ladies? Right? And this one gets me, too. Oh, yeah, you're from Canada. A, ha <laughs> ha, ding, 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 shut the fuck up. Not all Canadians say A all the time. Is that what you thought when you came up here? I mean, think about it. Just think about it. <laughs> like, how many Canadians you know are rooting a booth or who's going A all the time? <laughs> the only Canadians that say A all the time are the ones in the mafia. Hey, <laughs> forget about it. A <laughs> little joke. <laughs> Living in Los Angeles now, moved there. And it came to my attention very early that, you know, some of the women in Los Angeles, their boobies were fraudulent. <laughs> Imposter boobies. Boobies that can't be trusted. Why do girls, why do you feel the need to have to puff yourself out, make yourself more voluminous? Why do you need gigantic protruding malones. Like, is this like some kind of evolutionary mechanism? More surface area equals a better chance of a mate? I don't get why. Because pubes, right? We don't care about that kind of stuff, do we? Right? We don't care about big boobies on a girl. We care about what's inside, don't we? <laughs> Guys don't care. Guys only care about what's inside and how you feel and what do you read and do you like a massage? Maybe we can go to lunch. Beautiful young girl. I'm talking to you right now because there's still a chance. What's your name? Sagey. Sagey, and what's your, what's your age? 12. You're 12. You're right on the cusp. Don't ever get... Listen, you can be a real, regular, natural woman. You can have a nice, regular set. It sits about this big. You can be even flat-chested, it's fine. If you're, okay, if you're concave, then that's probably weird. <laughs> then I'd probably get something done. If you're concave and you have inward boob, then I'd, if you're lying on your back at parties and people are eating M&Ms out of your titties, <laughs> that's weird. Get it done, weirdo. If you're being passed around church and people are tossing nickels in your titties for Jesus, I get it done. If it's Carabana and you're lying on your back and a small Jamaican man is playing the steel titties, come Mr. Titty Man. Ding, 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 dong, ding. <laughs> Titty me banana. <laughs> Local reference. <laughs> and all the stuff you can get put in them. I mean, it's disgusting. Silicone and saline and low fat banana yogurt and all this. <laughs> It's gross. You don't have to do, you know, it's harmful to your body. Now, if you're thinking about doing it, let me just tell you what I suggest you do. I've done lots of research, and I think this is the healthiest choice for you, okay? So if you're thinking about doing it, what I would do is don't go to the doctor and do it. Just stay at home, do a little job yourself, and get somebody to cut off the top of your skull. Just saw it right off. You can use a power saw or something. <laughs> Then scoop out tissue from the part of your brain that controls self-esteem and confidence, right? <laughs> Put that in a Ziploc baggie, jam them under your armpits, stick them in there, sew it off. I mean, sure, you're going to have a giant scar across your face. You're going to look like a freak up here, but your tits will be awesome, and that's what will get you the job. Okay? So I moved down to L.A. Got to go where the work is. 
I finally bought a house, for example. I'm so excited. How many homeowners here? <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? And I got my house. I put in all these amazing, like, the sound system and surround sound. That was amazing, you know. But then I got the satellite radio, and one day I got stuck on this vocal jazz station. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> vocal jazz is the worst nauseating stuff. <laughs> How creeped out are you right now, sir, when I do that? Scooby dooby dooby shay. Wow, wow. It's so creepy. I hate it. Like, what are you saying? What are you trying to convey through your song? Right? I'm used to hearing lyrics and you get right into it. You understand when you're writing poetry and songs are born out of moments. And you're like, I've got to write this down. And you write a song, right? And you write words. But what is Bible Zavi Divi Divi? Why? You're never at home and you're like, Steve, you know what? You're totally acting Zavi Divi 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 And you're not getting any of Zavi Divi 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 See, people, this is the thing. You saw this move earlier. Don't do all like hip hop rap star, like, yeah, girl, I'm on, I'm on, give you that. I'm on, give you. Oh, yeah, girl. Uh -huh. mm. No. Nah. You got to get like a chihuahua fresh out of prison. Just. <laughs> That's really what really makes. See, she's totally turned on just by me. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> oh, I feel bad because the next time you two are doing it, you're going to have that image in your mind. I apologize. <laughs> oh, you're going to be right in the middle of it. She's going to burst out laughing. You're like, what are you laughing at? I was just thinking of Sean McGruber. Please keep going. <laughs> I need a lyric I can understand, right? Wake me up before you go-go. I get it. Wake me up before you go-go. Right? It makes sense to me. What you gonna do with all that junk? <laughs> all that junk inside that trunk. I'ma get, 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 get you drunk. Get you love drunk. Off my hump. I mean, think about what this person is saying. I mean, think about it. This makes sense to me. What you gonna do with all that junk, all that junk inside that trunk? Right? Of course, I'd be pissed off too if my brand new roommate who I haven't met yet hauls in this friggin' trunk full of extraneous belongings. What are you gonna do with all that junk, all that junk inside that trunk? This is a friggin' 750 square foot apartment, you asshole. You know where to fucking put it. But then you realize you cross the line, you're a little bit aggressive with it, so you're like, don't worry about it, because I'm gonna get, 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 get you drunk. Get you love drunk. Off my own, which, Putting it together, this clearly means that the, the said owner of the apartment <laughs> who wished to rent a room out <laughs> clearly has an abnormally enlarged tissue growth <laughs> on his back that contains Chimay beer. <laughs> Let's tap it and do this, bitch. <laughs> I got an iPhone. You guys like iPhones? Anybody got an iPhone? Oh, it's great. The iPhone, the iPhone is so smart. Man, it just, it senses your every move. Basically what happens with the iPhone, as soon as you touch it, it syncs up with your whole rhythm, your whole vibration, your DNA. It's fascinating, right? And then like you'll be typing and you'll be texting and it knows exactly what you're gonna say next. It's fascinating. It is like, I was writing to my brother, you know, see you tomorrow, right? I was like, see you, T-O-N, tomorrow. It fucking finishes my sentences. It knows me better than I know myself, iPhone. But sometimes it screws up. Right? I was out during playoffs last year, and I was looking for a place to watch the hockey game, right? And I said to my buddy Trigo, you stay home, I'll go up find a place, and then I'll, call, I'll text you and let you know. So I go to this place, it's totally empty, right? So I was like, hey, Troy, and I started writing, there's no one here is what I was going to write. And I got to T-H-E, and the iPhone knew me so well, it was like, Thebes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who says Thebes? What is Thebes? Who even says, hey, Troy, Thebes? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to tell my buddy Troy looking for a bar to watch a hockey game. Hey, Troy, Thebes. <laughs> oh, haste to Thebes. Like, what? <laughs> and all her calling streets from Dionysius' brow. 
cries the coming greets, where the playful nymphs of Carissian wander, awaiting <laughs> our rods of love. To Thebes, oh Thebes, oh haste to Thebes. All hail to Zeus above. Or we can go to Hooters. <laughs> you don't know me, iPhone. Uh, but then coming back here to Toronto, it's so strange because when I was away for so long, you get this new technology here in town, and I didn't even know it existed when I came back. And I was crossing the street at Queen University, and I was waiting to go, and then this freaking the light changed. I hear this noise. I didn't know it was there. I didn't know what it was. It was like beep boop, <laughs> beep boop. And my mushrooms just kicked too. So I was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> Beep boop. It's for blind people, right? Have you heard this? It's like, you, so basically when blind person stand there and they can't see, so they don't know when to go. And then the light changes to go beep boop. And they're like, okay, clickety click. And they go, right? <laughs> well, I didn't know what it was. And I just thought, this is so condescending to blind people. Do we have any blind people here? I mean it. <laughs> yeah, you blind people. <laughs> so horrible. It's so stupid. Oh, I'm so stupid. But I think it's so condescending to blind people, this noise. Beep, boop. Beep, boop. As if they don't have it bad enough as it is now at every street corner, right? They got to be reminded. Beep, boop. Who's blind? You are. Beep, boop. It's fucking horrible. And I think they should change the noise so it doesn't sound so condescending, right? Just change the tone. Like, you don't have to change the whole thing. Just don't make it so in the high register. Bring it down in the, you know, like, bring it down here so it's not like, yee, yee, rah, rah. right? So here's what I suggest. Instead of it being beep, boop, right? So the blind guy's standing there waiting to go. So waiting to go like that. Waiting to go. Because that's how they stand. They stand. Right? And then the light changes, and instead of hearing beep, Boop. He hears more like, uh, okay, blind people. <laughs> okay, you can go. Okay, you better go, dude. It's yellow. Oh, shit. You better. No, I'm serious. It's yellow. You better. Oh, fuck. Run. Run. Fuck, beep, fucking boop. Go. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it's always been my dream to be a ventriloquist. A lot of people don't know this, but if you look on my YouTube videos, I did back in the day, back in the 80s, I was a YouTube champ, I, I was a ventriloquism champion. I won the ventriloquism championships in Coquitlam in 1986. If you go to Coquitlam Ventriloquism Con Championships in 1986, <laughs> you'll see my video I posted, but I had a puppet named Timmy, and he was from Britain. I've lost my touch now, but I'm gonna try to bring him back because I know provincials are coming up, and I really want to get better at it. I want to go back to the like a pitcher in the majors, but I'm going to bring it back. So this is my, the key is you can't let your lips move, right? You've seen ventriloquisms in Coquitlam. They, they're very good in Coquitlam ventriloquism. <laughs> There's a British puppet named Timmy. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. My name is Timmy. <laughs> okay, wait. It's hard because you can't Timmy. Okay, Timmy. But you have to understand it. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Timmy. Fuck. Okay, you know what? No. It's not working out. I need to retrain on that one, but I figured it out. Last night it came to me. I need to bring back my puppet that I used to use. He's a little Inu puppet from the north. <laughs> and the key is you can't let the lips move. So you got to bongo. You got to get a look at this. This is the key. You can't let your... I'm going to win nationals, but I think... Watch the lips. Don't laugh. Okay, reset. Stop it. Reset. Little Eskimo puppet from the north, the Inu. Uh, 
He's not gonna lose. Yeah, I'm going to nationals. And I'm gonna win it. <laughs> Newfoundland, beautiful place. I love it so much, man. It's so awesome. You know, being from there, being raised there. Big hockey fans down there. Big hockey fans here, obviously. Yeah. Woo. See, Newfoundland is like this. It's got, like, very, in the tiny town I grew up in, the priorities went like this. It would go, um, number one priority was Jesus Christ, our Lord Savior. <laughs> right? Super religious, right? And then number two was hockey. <laughs> right? And then number three was ACDC. That was the order of importance in Newfoundland, Labrador, right? And it was so amazing because the town, the way it was divided, it was like divided into two. It was a little harbor town, and on one side of the harbor were all united church people, the Christian people, but they were united church. And then on the other side of the harbor were Pentecostals, right? And that's how it broke down. But here's the other interesting thing, right? Hockey and church bled together in many ways because all the Pentecostals, they were all Montreal Canadian fans, just as how it worked out. And all the friggin' United Church, they were all Toronto Maple Leaf fans, right? And you could hear it in church sometimes where they'd cross over and you hear little children singing. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know. Gila Fleur's a big homo. <laughs> I was raised in a very non-religious family, me and my mom and my sister, right, and in a super religious town, right, and it was amazing to see, like, we would go to church and everything, it was so fun, we'd learn about all the stories, David and Goliath, Jonah and the whale, asthmatic Larry and his dander-free kitten army, you know, the classics. <laughs> But we wouldn't take it that seriously. But the Pentecostals, holy jumping Jesus, like really serious. And the thing is about Pentecostals, it's their duty, right, to save those who have not accepted Jesus into their hearts, right? And there you got my mom. She's this divorced single mom with two darky youngsters, so there's no saving her, <laughs> right? And they look at, you know, mom was non-savable, but me and my sister, oh, we were fresh meat, my son, them Pentecostals. They'd walk around waiting, waiting to pounce like hyenas on a wounded antelope. Oh, ha, ha, ha. And then my mom went away. She got her hair done one time. She's gone for a couple hours. And the Pentecostals, they lured us into their house, <laughs> right? They lured me into their house under the guise of supper and VHS movies. <laughs> And right after I was done with my craft dinner, <laughs> they had a Jesus intervention, right? Sean, now, when was the last time you spoke to Jesus? <laughs> right? And then when I didn't say anything, they just, oh, that was it. They all put their hands all over my hairy little body. Oh, and they prayed for me. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. Oh, dear Jesus, help this savage youngster. I pray for this savage little youngster who looks like Mowgli from the Jungle Book. Dear Lord Jesus. And they prayed for me, right? And ever since, that scared the shit out of me. So I started thinking about the stories, like the Christmas story. Oh, come on. Have you seen a nativity scene? Have you really looked at a nativity scene? Next Christmas, I want you and you, a couple of fellas, a couple of guys, really look at Joseph's eyes, right? And you tell me that's not the eyes, not the look of a man who's troubled. He's holding something inside, right? He's not being honest with his feelings, is he, if you look at it? Something's up. And of course, you know, I think Joseph is just keeping it together, you know, because it's Christmas night and he didn't want to be a jackass, you know? But I guarantee you, the next day when they hauled ass back to Nazareth, right? That boxing night supper, right? <laughs> Joseph had a few drinks in him. <laughs> yeah, those three guys were pretty nice, weren't they? Yeah, no, I thought the gold was a little excessive, though, don't you? Like, you find it weird, all oh, the gold, the guy brings gold. 
the other two guys bring like myrrh and fucking incense, and the guy brings gold. <laughs> Come on, don't think I know what was going on. I saw the way you looked at him. You know what? I know you two hooked up last Easter long weekend, too. I fucking know. How do I know? Let's just say the little drummer boy does a little bit more of the drumming. La, la, la. He fucking told me everything. No, you go on. Ah, blah, he pukes. Because <laughs> if you think about these stories, right, they say from the time that these events actually happened to the time someone said, oh, shit, we should write this stuff down, it was like a thousand years. Don't you think something might have screwed up along the way? Isn't that possible? Right? You ever play that game, Broken Telephone? You're like, I like the color blue. Pass it on. And it goes all the way around. And it's like, your dad's a whore. What? How did he... Like, maybe the story got screwed up along the way. Maybe his name wasn't even Jesus. It was like G Jeff. It was Jeff. Right? And he wasn't a messiah, he was a masseuse. Yeah, that's it. He was a masseuse. And people would come from all over the land. Hey man, I threw my back out stone in heathens the other day, man. You guys know him anybody? Oh yeah, just go down to Jeff's house. That guy works fucking miracles, man. <laughs> God created man in his own image, they say. I had no idea God was a member of ZZ Top. <laughs> like, have you seen a big, long, white beard? You know, the friggin', you know, God has that guitar that spins around like that. <laughs> you know, and it just made me think. It's like, okay, wait a minute. So God created man in his own image. But according to these books, the template that God used to create man in his own image was a modern homo sapien sapien. Right? But... Clearly, the fossil evidence shows that some of the oldest hominid fossils ever found are 7.1 million years ago, and they look nothing like modern man. Not at all. But then I thought about, wait a minute. Maybe God did create man in his own image, but he was a little, tiny, three-and-a-half-foot-tall, ape-like creature <laughs> who liked to eat berries and wade in shallow pools, and when animals would come over, he'd throw his poo at them. Maybe that's what God did, Right? But, of course, God didn't take into consideration evolution. That's where he went wrong. Well, I guess because God didn't believe in evolution. <laughs> right? So we have some Newfoundlanders here. Yeah? You got to be careful with Newfoundland women. <whistles> Powerful women. Newfoundland women are amazing, man. They, all this stuff about, you know, plastic surgery and getting all these things done, they don't care. Newfoundland women are proud. They got everything. They could have a beard and a freaking hook, and they don't care. Yes, I'm beautiful. I'm sexy. Even the strippers in Newfoundland, what they do, they don't even care. Like, they don't even adopt those crazy names, you know, like those names, the strippers up here. Like, all right, fellas, here she comes to the stage. Give it up. She's hot. She's sexy. Here's Diamond. You know, they don't do that, right? They're like, hey, all right, boys, here she comes to the stage. Give it up. Here she is, Marjorie. <laughs> Doing the Bayman shuffle. <laughs> House coat and slippers. She didn't even fucking care. <laughs> right? You want to see my box? You want to see my box? You want a little peep? Oh, oh, you like that? Uh-oh. Yeah, that's right. Get your feet off the fucking stage. Get your feet off of the stage, you asshole. Jesus Christ. If I gotta come down there, I'll drive your teeth and your truck so far. You have to stick a toothbrush up your ass to brush them. Now look at me. You will get turned on by this. It's beautiful, beautiful women. Agnes in the cage. Agnes, can we get Agnes in the cage? <laughs> Let me out, Ridge on cold. Give me back my track pants. Agnes, get in that friggin' cage. People always ask, right? Like, what is it about Newfoundland and Labrador and their spirit? Why are they so this and that kind? And why are they so funny, right? Well, they can tell a friggin' story, can't they? Man, they can spin a tail. And it's amazing because, like here in Ontario, when you ask somebody a question, you might go, excuse me, can you tell me where the pharmacy is? Right? And they're like, yes, would you go this way and hang a left? And you're right there. <laughs> in Newfoundland, when you ask a question, 
Very rarely do you ever just get an answer. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's amazing, man. It's really amazing. Excuse me, sir. Yes. I was wondering if you could tell me where the pharmacy is. The what? The pharmacy, or the drugstore. Oh my son, you came to the right filler to ask about drugs. I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. Anyway, why? Why? What do you need, old man? You need some rubbers? You need a condom? <laughs> Here's what I do, man. Here's just a little tip. What I do is I dip mine in latex paint. I'm good for the winter, eh? <laughs> you can do that. Oh, you don't like that? You get a rash, do you? Oh, that's all right. Then why? What do you need? Oh, toothbrush. Jeez, you can borrow mine if you want, my son. We're the friendliest people in the world. Here's what you do, me buddy. That's a funny accent you got. But anyway, go up there. Now, you see that house on the left-hand side there? Now, that belongs to Bob Don. Now, there's a little dog out front of that house. Jesus Christ, that dog named Skipper's my son. We had some laugh at him. He's the cutest little dog. And when you go up to him, it looks like he's going to fucking tear the head right off you because he got this teeth flaring, my son. He'll bark at you. But he won't hurt you. You can go right up to him, pet him right on the head, my dear. And all that foam around his mouth, that's not from having rabies or nothing like that. That's actually, we love throwing Rolaids in there every now and then. He loves the Rolaids, my son. Every, even sometimes when I get, goes out and I has one of those nights with pizza and beer, Jesus, the heartburn just fucking kills me, right? I just goes up the skippers and I just like, blah, 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 blah. Come here, Skipper, give me a kiss, me lover. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, it's like taking a dagger out of my chest like that. Anyway, go beyond that house, and then on the right up there, you see that other house? David Langley, the fire marshal in town, eh? Fire chief, it was so funny. Because a few years ago, when Ernestine was up working up in the fish plant up in New Brunswick, that's the only time he was allowed to have a draw, right? So he was having a draw one night, and he was sitting on the toilet, and he was smoking and sitting and smoking and sitting. And he passed out because it was strong stuff all the way from British Columbia, eh? And he fell down, and the friggin' police caught on fire. Jesus Christ, he woke up. He didn't know what to do because he was stolen out of his tree, right? And then he ran downstairs. He called the fire chief. Jeez, he was the fire chief. Kept getting a busy signal. Fucking burn half his face off. We break his balls about that, so I'm lying. Anyway, pharmacy's on the right just up there past that. True story. Thank you, Toronto. You're absolutely amazing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I love you, Toronto. Thank you, guys. You're absolutely amazing. Cheers. Thank you.